Hey folks, Akras here with another what to think about when founding your capital city guide, this time for Persia. Let's start with a brief overview of Persia. Persia gives you plus 50% harvest production, which is nice in the early game if you want to harvest some culture with your scout uh, or find gold. Um, elephants, for example, give 75 instead of 50, um, which is really nice. Ranged units reduced in cost by 25%, which is very nice because that applies to all these ranged units, which includes your unique unit as well as siege units like the Anjur and the Manjanel and the Poly Poly. Um, very good. And pastures um, give you an extra half order, which doesn't seem like a lot, but does add up. If you're going to have 10 pastures in the game, that's five orders that appeared out of thin air. Um, if you have 20 pastures, congrats, you now have 10 extra orders. Um, the unique unit is probably, honestly, the strongest unique unit in the game. It is a ranged horse unit that also has route. Um, it is the only ranged unit in the game that has route. What this means is you can build a horde of cataphract or paltown or Cataphract archers or Palatine cavalry have them go to a location and um, shoot a target just like range units and then have one of them use route um, to kill off that target and then go to the next target. Um, incredibly strong and powerful. Persia's four families are the riders, the hunters, the clerics, and the statesmen. Personally, I am not that enamored with clerics. You can do pretty cool things with them, um, especially if you have a zealot leader for some reason, like you're playing with pick later leaders and you pick a zealot leader, it gives you a guaranteed religion. Uh, or there's a lot of sand um, can be fun, um, or you're playing a particularly peaceful game and want to have a religion from the start, clerics would be fun. Generally, I just don't find them up to par. And with the caveat, I mostly play multiplayer. Uh, you're looking at riders, hunters, and statesmen. Riders are your one of your two military families, like Assyria. Persia has two military families, which is super great because uh, they get two training in both of those. So riders... Uh, they get that two training and their cities are always connected, which means they get two growth and minus one discontent. Note that the connected does not mean that they are part of the trade network, so you can't connect another city to a connected rider, a rider city that is not on the trade network. It won't be connected. And um, hamlets, for example, do not get the bonus uh, for being on the trade network. It's just 10 gold for a hamlet in a connected city that is not on the trade network. So you'll still probably want to put them on the trade network for those hamlets. But it's nice if you've got a city in some remote location that you can't be bothered to get a road to, uh, or it doesn't have a river running through it. It's it's super nice to have that connected uh, option. New mounted units start as Saddleborn, and Saddleborn is a great trait that essentially gives you plus 25% attack if flanking. Remember, a unique unit is this awesome, fast-moving ranged horse unit, so you can easily and yes, it works on it works on the unique unit too. Uh, so if you put a cataphract archer on the either side um, of a unit, you get plus twenty five attack um, both to both cataphract archers. It's it's kind of awesome. Um, I have a specific video on flanking that explains all about how flanking works. Please take a look at it if you have questions about flanking. Um, and the rider family seat has horses, camels, or elephants for sure for basically out of thin air, so you can always build those units, which means you can always build your unique unit out of your rider seat. So you want to make sure you can build your unique unit as many cities as possible. So try to avoid founding your rider seat where you have horses and on founding it a scout, which is nice for extra visibility um, and getting early legitimacy from scouting. Hunters are the other military family for Persia. They also get that two training. New ranged units get Sentinel. Sentinel is pretty amazing. If you're in your national territory, so within your borders, you get plus 20% strength on any ranged unit. And remember, your unique unit is ranged. So if you're using your cataphract archers or Palton cavalries defensively and you produce them out of your hunter city, totally viable, they get plus 20% strength. That's really, really good. Um, so if you're ever in a defensive war, uh, make sure you produce some out of your hunter cities as well um, because they're incredibly valuable. You also potentially will want to build your onagers out of hunter cities uh, because that plus 20% in national territory means if you're slow pushing someone with onagers and slowly pushing cities ahead, uh, ideally your onagers are sitting, shooting from your national territory. It's not quite as good as artisans uh, because they do, doesn't work everywhere, but if you can push your national boundaries, uh, perhaps through cities or through creative tile buying, through navigation, colonies, uh, the colonies law can be really, really good. Hunter cities are growth machines thanks to 100% output on camps and nets. Uh, there's also the project The Hunt, which honestly is very underwhelming. I can probably count on one hand the number of times I built this project. Part of the reason is I usually don't need food that badly, and adding a growth per year isn't that big a deal. Generally, I want growth in the early game, and my cities are going to be doing something else. Um, by the time the late game rolls around, and maybe I even have bandwidth to do those hunts, I, I just don't care. I have enough food, and I don't need the growth. 
uh, but useful in a pinch. The nicer thing about the seat is you get a bunch of resources for founding it, which especially if you're playing on the grate where you have no starting resources, uh, that can be super, super convenient. Clerics um, get minus two discontent per city per year, which is nice, but on the grate you're looking at plus 14 discontent a year, so minus two is just not that big a deal. You can build urban, urban improvements on sand, which is nice, but generally you want to avoid sand um, because you can't really do anything with it. Um, so that very situation is useful. Monasteries and temples do get plus 50% output, which is somewhat nice, um, but I don't think it's enough to justify choosing clerics, largely because these come pretty late in the game. Family Seat also produces disciples in half time, uh, which again is nice, and the religion, you get a religion on seat founding, which is kind of cool, and again, if you want to do something cool with a pick later zealot, or really want to emphasize a religious game early on, and really want to make sure you lock in your religion, um, clerics are, are a fine choice, but generally I, I would almost never play with them in a, in a competitive game. And the last um, so the last family here for Persia is the Statesman. Uh, these give you an amazing one order per year, contributing to Persia's amazing order economy. I think Persia has the best order economy in the game, uh, both between pastures and statesmen and your family seat spamming decree, uh, which gets you even more orders. If you get it up to culture, you can pump out plus extra 12 units, or plus 12 extra orders, or, or 10 extra orders, even six extra orders at no culture level. Um, very useful. You get an extra civic per family opinion level. Family opinion level has six levels, starting at Furious, which is minus 200, then uh, Angry, which is the next level, minus 100 and below, and then between minus 1 to minus 99 is Upset, that's level 3, and Cautious is level uh, 4, 0 to 99, and then Pleased is level 5, 100 to 199, and then Friendly is level 6, uh, 200 plus. That means since you're starting at Cautious, you're getting four civics a year per city, which is nice for getting those decrees out. Decree is a project that you build with civics that gives you at weak culture six orders, at developing culture eight orders, at strong culture ten orders, and at legendary culture twelve orders. That's a super nice boost if you can find a nice place with marble or you set up uh, appropriate um, poet setups so in, and a growth city so you can get a lot of uh, civics from uh, three elder poets and a lot of growth from the extra citizens. Uh, just a clarify what in the world I'm talking about. Um, the Elder Poet has five culture a year, that's cool, but each citizen gives uh, plus one culture. And to remind you what in the world a citizen even is, uh, this little green box right here is your number of citizens. They turn into specialists, which is the yellow box, and the purple box is your discontent. Um, but if you have a lot of growth in a city, you can uh, build a bunch of specialists uh, or uh, you can you can get a lot of citizens that you could convert to specialists, or if you uh, have three elder poets, one in an Odeon, one in a theater, and one in an amphitheater, each of those uh, gives you one civic. So if you have, let's say, five citizens in a city uh, and three specialists, your three elder poets, uh, then those five citizens each give you three civics, which gives you 15 civics, which is kind of amazing. Um, anyway, the optimization of, of statesmen and uh, sage seats is a whole other topic that I probably should make a separate video on. Um, but yeah, statesmen, they do that. Um, the Kree is pretty cool. And then uh, treasury is kind of a nice bonus on each, in each city, which is it's kind of nice. And the seat gives you 400 civics, which is super convenient to get your first law up and running. It's probably enough about Persia. Um, I should say Persia is probably my favorite civ. Um, I like Greece a lot, but I, Persia is near and dear to my heart. I've probably played more games as Persia than any other Civ, just their unique unit, their order economy, their family selection, uh, all, all very wonderful things. All right, let's uh, take a look at map one here. So generally, I'm not going to be founding statesmen early unless there's... The reason is I want my capital to be doing other things than spamming decree. Uh, so I see this marble. I do not want this marble in my capital. I want that marble wherever my statesman seat is. Um, Generally, then, the choice is between riders and hunters. If I see a horse, I am not going to go riders. If I see any hunter resource, I'm very tempted to go hunter resource. Um, so here, we don't have any hunter resources. Um, or also would make me lean riders, but you can also have or in a hunter city because you have two military families as Persia. Um, so generally, you're going to want to maximize your food resources. If you're not playing with starting text, um, or if you're playing with starting text, then Persia does start with pasture. Um, and in fact, Persia has all the prereqs for spoked wheel unlock, just like Hati. 
Um, so you do have husbandry, which is really nice, but you can get pastures right off the bat. You also have trapping, so you only are one tech away from getting military drill. You also have ironworking, so you're one tech away from labor force. Um, yeah, Persia, just amaz amazing sieve, one of my favorites. Um, so here, starting wise, starting location wise, I would likely try to get um, as many food resources as possible. Looks like our starting location gets us just two. Um, if we move here, we get that wheat. And then if we move here, we get another wheat. So we move here, would probably found riders. Um, I don't see any particular hunter resources. And um, I might as well get riders up and running here. Uh, it gives me another scout. And uh, I, I don't have a horse here. So it effectively creates a horse out of thin air. Uh, so I would go riders here. And then I would try to make this my statesman seat. I found it third once I have... Um, labor force research so I can grab, grab slavery with it and then try to grab that marble into that statesman seat if I can uh, to make my statesman seat sort of start spamming decrees. And I'd be looking for a good location ideally with a lot of hunter resources. The nice thing though is your hunter seat, every hunter city, has that bonus to uh, camps and nets so your hunter seat doesn't need to be in a great spot as long as a hunter city is in a great spot to be able to pump out settlers um, and, and workers for the hunter family. Map 2. Um, this game is out of reach. We have ore. We don't appear to have horses nearby. Um, we're likely reading riders. We can grab that ore later on somehow, um, with something here, for example. Uh, so I probably would settle riders. Do I actually need to move two units to grab both food, both, uh, goats and sheep? I do. Um, yeah, I would likely settle riders here. Um, and then... There's some wheat, there's no hunter resources. There may be a nice hunter city site here with those two games, so I'd be looking at that. Um, and then potentially I have a garrison here. It's a river forest, so I don't really want to build on it, um, but I might build like a shrine here or a hamlet here to grab that ore. Or once I unlock the um, colonies law from the navigation tech, I might just buy that particular uh, tile to grab that ore. It's not super important to get that ore online early. It would be nice to. Um, but I think it's better to get the two food uh, early before the ore. But you could also very much found um, here. The problem is founding, grabbing the ore doesn't give you any food. And I, if it gave you one, then maybe, but like not grabbing any, I think is too much. So I, I would found over there. Um, and yeah. Map three. I'm smiling when I look at this map because uh, we have a bunch of hunter resources. Um, one crap, two crap, game. Very much go hunter. Could be an amazing capital, um, just for illustration purposes. Like this is now um, as a hunter city. This is four growth from the nets, um, four growth there, and four growth from the game. So this city just immediately gets a lot. Looks like there's some horses as well, so we can build a unique unit here, um, and then we can potentially uh, found this as a rider city, and maybe if we can get this city to grab these horses, um, something to think about. Again, you want to spread your horses out. The hunter seat, uh, which is your capital, does not have horses, so you want to be able to give it horses. Um, and your rider seat will likely, uh, the, your rider seat gets horses for free, so you, you don't want to have horses in its boundaries. Uh, so expanding your borders to grab those horses before you found that city might be nice. Not the end of the world if that city grabs uh, those horses, but always nice to spread the horses around, especially in your capital, which is generally going to be your uh, one of your leading cultural cities because it's the first one built, uh, so it'll probably get towards higher culture. You also tend to build wonders there, and since your unique unit is gated by culture, you'll want to build that out of your capital and uh, your your second city, city generally, especially for Persia. I'm looking to find good sites for my uh, hunter seat and my um, rider seat because I'm going to be building and want to build my unique unit out of both because uh, Saddleborn and Sentinel are both such great promotions that come for free with units from those cities. Map 4. We've got a lot of hunter resources here, so we're definitely founding hunters here. We also have some horses in range, which is nice. We should be able to grab them uh, for a hunter seat. I don't necessarily think we need to move too much. Um, could arguably get that honey, uh, but I think I won't because it makes the goats a little harder to get. If we found here, then we can put a shrine here and grab those goats. Uh, if we move here, we can no longer do that. Um, and I prioritize getting the goats in border over getting the honey and border. Plus we will probably buy this tile um, to get the honey and then buy the tile to get the horses. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I'd rather get those goats in border than I would get the honey in border. Um, so yeah, plus, it's <laughs> the city's already on this tile. Uh, the settler's already in this tile, so we might as well just found hunters uh, right here. Map five. Um, well, too bad Persia doesn't have land owners because holy crap, five crop resources. Um, yeah, so that's that's a lot. Um, probably would move at least one tile north. It gets me two more food. Um, yeah, open to founding here. Probably would found riders. Um, don't have any hunter resources in borders. Um, don't want to do statesmen because I I'd like my there, there's no benefit to founding statesmen and I generally yeah I, I don't want my capital spamming decrees if I don't have to. You could arguably make a case for clerics because you do have some sand nearby, um, but I I would almost certainly go riders if you wanted to do clerics though. Um, seeing sand nearby will let you sort of expand into that with uh, building urban improvements, uh, which is kind of nice. So riders or clerics. 